talking today about your once a month meals cooking day. First things first, you want to start out with some as much counter space real estate as you can. If you're not using it on your cooking day, I suggest that you put it in the bedroom, out of, um, out of sight, out of mind kind of attitude. This is ideally how I like my kitchen to start. It is not what happened on my cooking day yesterday, and I had a little bit of space issues, but you make do. I'll leave my table open for my non-perishables, is what we'll go over here in a few slides, but ideally start clean. Get out your measuring utensils, anything that you will possibly need, even those you don't. Bowls and bowls galore for mixing and getting things ready. And then set up on your main table all of your non-perishables. I didn't get a good picture of mine yesterday. This is an older picture from Trisha's Kitchen. But your go through your grocery list and set up all of your non-perishables in one place. You want it to be your one-stop shop for anything that's not in the fridge or in your coolers from prep day. Um, this includes all of your spices, canned goods, etc. Your perishable items, <clears throat> excuse me, gonna be in your fridge or in your coolers, like I mentioned in the last video, prepped, chopped, ready to go. You want your trash can to be empty, ready to be full, and then you can get started. I like to go through my prep day and cooking instructions and organize my recipe cards. Some like to tape them to their cabinet space, um, but I like to have mine right next to me so I can check it off. Pull the items from your non-perishable table and your perishable from the fridge. Line them up, get all of your ingredients out in one stop, and then start on the recipe. I'm doing burgers on my end of the counter and my husband is doing a pork um, recipe on the other side of the counter and we're sharing ingredients in the middle so we can kind of maximize that time for the two of us but again if you line up everything right in front of you it's a lot easier and you're not wasting steps running around your kitchen enlist the help of everybody in your family if you can even stirring helps I wanted to show you a little bit about flash freezing and this is one of the questions that came up uh, when I asked I like to flash freeze our burger patties because I don't like to have them cooked and then frozen. So ideally I put them on a plate or a cookie sheet lined with wax paper and put them in my deep freeze. You can also put them in your regular fr freezer and just let them cool. Um, and we'll go over how to bag them later on. But this is uh, what we mean when we say to flash freeze an item is to put it in the freezer while you go about your cooking day. Here is the middle of the chaos. Lots of helpers. That's why we suggest babysitter for those with little ones on cooking days. Um, but you can see here, it's not pretty, it's not organized, but we try our best. Here, during our cooking day, um, my husband finished the marinades in the blender, and I'm working on an assembly line for these sweet potatoes. And you can see this is just four recipes deep worth of dishes in our sink. These are stuffed sweet potatoes, and another just tip and trick I wanted to show is while he's doing dishes at this great break in our cooking day, I use that countertop space for my assembly line. I individually wrap these in plastic wrap as tight as I can, and that way they're all ready to go for lunches on the go. I put my cooking day instructions up on the fridge so I can check it off easily, the steps where we are at, and just to kind of keep ourselves in check um, on time if we're doing pretty good um, time-wise. As you can see, again, doing dishes. If you assign a partner, a cooking partner, or just give yourself breaks in that cooking day instruction sheet to do those um, dishes in between, it really helps the rest of your day move smoothly. So I'm still working on my assembly line on the other side of the counter, and he has finished the dishes. So we are ready to tackle our next recipes. On our big table there, I have also assigned a spot for our cooling station um, or a sim kind of where I'm just letting our meals gather. This allows me to have a spot to label all my bags and then to go through and double check that there are no air bubbles, make sure there's a real airtight seal on everything to prevent freezer, freezer burn, but more importantly, to let things that we have cooked on a cooking day cool to room temperature. That is the, one of the biggest keys to um, freezer, uh, preventing freezer burn, excuse me, is to let things cool to room temperature before you put them in the freezer. Um, it's probably one of our, our biggest uh, questions here at Once Month Meals. 
So now here's the burgers that I pulled from the freezer. This is towards the end of our cooking day. I pulled them back out and you can see I'm just holding it with two fingers and it's nice and stiff. So easily like more ready to be bagged. And what I do is I take four patties to the bag, line some wax paper on top, and then place four more patties on top. And this just allows me to kind of pull out a single serving hamburger if I wanted it for lunch um, or just myself. Um, but also, um, they way they don't get smushed in the freezer process. You can see also from this picture, my label is a little bit shiny. I tend to be on the cheap end since I am making more paleo meals here and I don't use label paper. I simply print them out on scratch paper um, or recycle paper from my uh, office, um, cut them out and just slap a piece of packaging tape on them. Um, sometimes I put one piece on top and one on the bottom so it gets a good seal all the way around. This way the label doesn't get um, soggy or runny in the thaw process, but also keeps a nice uh, tight seal on it to prevent from falling off in the freezer as well. So that's kind of a good tip for labeling. You can see the trash can is now overflowing, ready to be dumped, calling it a day. And here are our meals. Again, I like to keep everything out all at once um, and then take inventory and put it in the freezer. Again, this allows us time for them all to cool to room temperature and to be ready for the freezer to prevent freezer burn. Nice bagged and tagged, ready to go. Some have labels and some don't um, because I uh, had more than one bag that I expected for, which can happen at times. I wanted to show you how to also stack these meals in two different kinds of freezers. I have a side-by-side -side and a deep freeze. In my side-by-side, -side, I like to put the bulkier uh, meals, like these are um, bags full of items for kebabs, which I chose not to skewer until my cooking or my serving day. So I put those big bulkier ones that can't lay flat in the baskets. And then on top of those, I lay ones that can lay flat and kind of stack them as I go. Um, I do pair my meals together in the freezer. Um, you know, I like meals together so I can pull one out at a time. But if you wanted to, you could separate them. On my top shelf, I have items my single serving lunch items like the sweet potatoes, uh, my burgers, things that I know I will use more often in the first few weeks to pull from or won't need to pull the whole bag out to thaw. Um, I put those in the top shelf. Next, if you have a chest freezer, this is how I recommend going about your cooking day, is to use those coolers again, stack those meals in the cooler, haul them out to the garage or the basement, wherever your deep freeze is. And then I like to use the baskets in my deep freeze for my freezer meals so that way they don't get lost in the deep abyss of the deep freeze with my other uh, fruits and vegetables that I may have processed in months prior or meat um, that we get from the butcher or on sale, whatever, what have you. I like my meals to be where I can access them. So I typically in my baskets, I put my crock pot meals in one, uh, grilling or um, more more cook on serving day ones in another basket and then my individual servings in the third basket. You can see there I have some oatmeal leftover or coconut porridge from a paleo menu prior. And then they're all in baskets ready for me to grab and go. And here is another great point too. I like to um, check them off as I go, put them in the freezer on my thaw sheet so that way um, I can put that thaw sheet on my fridge and make note of where they are, whether in my deep freeze or my side-by-side, -side, and check them off as I plan my meals for the week. I hope that helps give you a little more insight to how a Winsome Meals cooking day works. Um, I was tired. We were exhausted. Uh, this was the Paleo June 2014 menu for six people. Um, it took us on cooking day um, about... Uh, let's see, three to four hours. I didn't do the full menu because I swapped out recipes that um, I knew we wouldn't eat with those that we did. And that's a great advantage of our pro membership. If you want to check it out, I have some links below. But um, it, the cost for six people for us um, for all these meals was about $400. And it comes down to um, 
just a few dollars per meal per person, which is very beneficial for me to not have to think about throughout the month. So I hope this helps you. If you have any other questions, feel free to um, comment below, or we also have chat, um, online chat office hours now on our site in the t uh, bottom right hand corner of our site. You'll see a little chat window and we're here to have, answer your questions anytime we have those office hours open. Thanks for joining. Talking.